Uh, for a good regression, for a good regression, you probably learned this before. Uh, we're going to measure regression good or bad by using regression R squared. R squared is a number between zero and one, right? So that if uh, the larger is better, if your R squared is close to one, it means my regression fits better, fits well, right? If R squared is close to zero, it means I'm poorly fitted, right? So let's formally introduce what they are, why it's a number between zero and one, why matter is so on so forth. First of all, our regression is y is a function alpha plus beta x plus ui, right? So that once you have alpha hat, beta hat, they are all or less estimators. Plug in alpha, beta by alpha hat, beta hat, replace them. So that basically this part, if you replace the alpha, beta by their hat, we call them y hat. We call them y hat. So this part, this part, we call it y hat. Correspondingly, y minus y hat, so that correspondingly, the residual we call it u hat. Again, if this part, if by using, by replacing alpha hat or beta hat, the first part, you got y hat, by, you got y hat. Then correspondingly, the ui part, y minus u, y hat, y minus y hat, y minus y hat, the difference, we got u hat, we call it residuals. So first of all, some uh, terminology. UI, we call it regression, the true regression error term. True regression error term means something we never know, we never, we never observe. But residuals, they are U hat. Residuals, they are U hat. We can calculate. We can calculate. Why? Because alpha, alpha hat, beta hat, those are some numbers we estimated, we calculated, right? So that y hat is also something we calculate, right? So that correspondingly u hat will be something we can calculate. So that whenever we put a hat on top, it means it's something we can calculate. As alpha hat or beta hat, they correspond to the true value alpha beta. Y hat, they correspond to the true value y. U hat, they correspond to the true value u, right? So that, so that that's a difference. Residuals, they correspond to u hat. UI corresponding true regression, true error term, right? Now let's introduce some uh, jargons. Since by definition of a UI, by definition of UI, if you move Y hat to the left-hand side, as Y equals to y, uh, y hat plus U hat, right? If you just move Y hat to the, to the left-hand side, the summation of the, the two simply equals to Y, right? So it is, y equals the summation of those y hat and u hat, right? OK. So y could be decomposed into y hat and uh, u hat. Now, I want to show you something, which is not only y could be decomposed in two parts. Actually, if you take variance of y, if you take variance of y, variance of y actually also equals to variance of y hat plus variance of u hat. In other words, this equation for every single part, you know, if you take variance, that's also true. Why this is true? Actually, very, very simple. The proof is if you left-hand side, if you take variance, right-hand side, the variance of the summation by definition, variance of summation equals to variance of the first term plus the variance of the second term plus the two times those covariances, right? Basically, I'm showing you is a covariance between the two is simply zero. So that again, the proof not required. Just, uh, just trust me, the covariance between y hat and u hat, the covariance is zero. So that the variance of y simply equals to the variance first term plus the variance of second term. That's a show. So now we are ready to introduce regression R squared. What's regression R squared? For example, suppose the total variance of y, let's say, suppose the variance of y is say, 100, and the uh, y hat part, suppose the variance is 80. And the residuals, suppose the, the variance is 20. So that we have such a, you know, formula, 100 takes uh, two parts, 80 plus 20, right? What's regression R squared? Regression R squared basically measures how much from your y hat part. So it's a variance of y hat divided by variance of y. 
So it's the first part divided by total is simply R squared. Then of course, the, you know, the first part divided by total, of course, is a fraction between zero and one, right? <laughs> because at most equals to one, right? At least, you know, or the worst uh, is a zero, right? The first part divided by total, right? So that's why the fraction R squared is a fraction between zero and one. It's the first part divided by total. So if most of information come from your y hat, in other words, if if a fitted value actually contains the most part, then we call it, this is a good regression, right? Most of information y could be explained by y hat. Then this is a good regression. So, and so this is a good, we say 80% information of y could be explained by y hat. What's y hat? What's y hat? If you take a closer look at a y hat, y hat is formula is a function of x, right? y hat basically is a function x. So that, for example, suppose you have a regression, r square is, is 80, 0 0.8, or 80 percent. Then the, the sentence to explain, to interpret 80 percent r square could be 80 percent information of y could be explained by using y hat. Again, what's y hat? y hat is a function x, right? So that equivalently, you can say 80% information of y could be explained by using x, right? For example, say 80% information of your wage could be explained by using your education, right? So, that's a, so that in that case, that's a very good regression, right? Of course, opposite, suppose, Suppose again, total is 100. The y hat part or x part only takes 20%. Most of them actually goes to, to the residual, right? So, so of course, so that's a bad regression. So regression R square will be 20 divided by 100. Regression R square is 20%, right? So that's a poor regression. Only 20% only information y could be explained by using our x, right? <laughs> so that's the intuition and that's the corresponding regression y. So, so this is the, my way to interpret the regression r squared. Uh, most of textbooks kind of, you know, <laughs> show you a different formula of regression r squared. Basically it's something, you know, uh, anyway, <laughs> totally different from this, right? To me, that's a much better way to, re to understand regression r squared. I would uh, always suggest to interpret R square this way. Actually, not only to re all or less regression, later on, whatever re fancy regression you have, for example, let's say, again, non-parametric regression, even though you don't know what's non-parametric regression, you can always, from, from whatever regression, you can do a calculation, calculate your y hat, do a prediction, right? Calculate your y hat, and simply calculate how, many, how much information comes from your y hat, right, fitted value how much information goes to the residuals, right? So a good regression should have been, most information actually could be explained by using X, right? So, so that's basically the idea of a regression R square. And uh, one more technical detail is uh, equivalently, equivalently, you can prove R square, the formula up here, you can prove R square equals to this correlation square. What kind of correlation? If you calculate the correlation between Y and the y hat, if you calculate the correlation between y and a y hat, once you have the correlation, square that correlation, it will be exactly the, the regression R square you have. So that's an equivalent formula. This is, this is also a good formula. Again, most textbooks doesn't show this formula, <laughs> but to me, that's another good formula. Why? Because again, a good regression, hopefully, you know, your y and y hat, Basically, you know, they're very close to each other so that U hat will be very, very small, goes almost to zero, right? In that case, if your Y hat almost equals to 2Y, then the correlation between the two almost equals to Y, right? So that in that case, if you square that correlation, that's why regression R square will be always a large number close to Y, right? Similarly, a bad regression, you know, Y and a Y hat very different from each other. Their correlation very close to zero, right? So in that case, R square will be all, all very close to zero. So this this is another very good formula. Either either the formula first one or second one, both of them they're good. So 
you know, if I write textbook, I, I would recommend that they too, <laughs> rather than most, that, you know, textbook in most, commoner uh, in most textbook. These are the good one to me. Uh, in the special case, if we have only one single X, then this formula could be further reduced to here to replace Y hat by X because Y hat is a function X. But in general, if we have multiple axes, for example, x1, x2, x3, right? So, you know, uh, y hat, this equation is uh, still true, but the next one, next one, since we have multiple axes, the next equation may not be true anymore. But uh, we can always use the uh, first one, y and y hat correlation to calculate regression R square. That's, uh, that's the idea of regression R square and how to interpret that number. So, Later on, I'll give you more intuition, give you more examples. Uh, today, we, we did two proofs, and uh, you're going to do the corresponding homework, homework number three, as I as I mentioned at the very beginning. So in the midterm exam, uh, from exactly exactly these two proof questions from the homework, I'm going to run that. So that I, I don't want you, you to do bad, which one I'm going 